This is Twit. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at Anderson Connectors. And uh, we encourage everybody with Andersons that you want to be sure and use the right crimping tool. Or if you're going to solder them, that's fine. Or if you're going to crimp and solder them, that's okay. But be sure and use the right tools for getting the job done. We had several of the uh, connector uh, boxes turned over to me uh, for, uh, they're giving them away because they're broken. And I said, well, what's broken? And they go, well, my radio is intermittent. Anytime I hook it up to my uh, Anderson connector uh, distribution box and um, um, you can have it. I'm, I'm tired of fussing with it. And I go, wait, wait, they can be repaired. So if you've got an Anderson uh, connector set up that looks like this, and we'll go to our next slide, <clears throat> and um, you wiggle the connectors as I'm doing right there, and they're loose, then you know that that's where the problem is. It's not your radio. Uh, it's not necessarily the DC uh, going to the DC input on these distribution uh, 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 boxes, but rather it's a bad connection. And if you take a look at one, two, the third one up and the fourth one up, you can see that uh, they pulled right out of the circuit board. And you may say, well, you know, I pull the fuses out and, and nothing happens there. And that's because almost all of the Anderson connector distribution block manufacturers do a great job of getting the fuses all squared away. But, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, how many of you, as I've done, have lost a fuse inside the box? Well, if you do, you're going to need to open up the back to get that little pesky fuse out. Don't leave it rolling around on the inside. When you open up the back of your Anderson connector distribution box, on most of them, you immediately see the circuit board that the Anderson connectors are uh, soldered into. And um, all of the manufacturers, I should say almost all of them, uh, the uh, sole holdout would be West Mountain Radio. I have yet to ever have one of those fail. The West Mountain Radio they must weld them into place. But anyway, everybody else uses a small amount of solder to hold the connector points in. And what occurs is when you unplug your unit from the Anderson connector box, you give it a tug. And instead of just coming out, it comes totally out. And that's because the solder has broken off the two pins. And unless there's a ton of solder holding on to the two pins, it's just going to pull right out. There is nothing special about the two pins that go into the uh, holes on the circuit board inside the box. Uh, it looks like just pieces of wire. And as you can see, there's not a lot of solder on them. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, you can sort of wiggle them around. You're not going to be able to easily solder to the top of the pins. But where you do want to get at is at the bottom. And you insert the pins back in place and make sure that the reds all align with all the other reds and the black align with all the other black ones. I take a little bit of flux and I put it over the pin that I have now produce, uh, uh, going through the board <clears throat> protruding from the board, and that will allow the solder to stick as soon as I hit it with a good hot soldering iron. So once I've got it on there, I'll come in with a very hot soldering iron. you got to make it hot because beside getting the pin hot, you've got to get the hole that it is protruding through and the solder around the hole nice and hot. Um, some folks use a small soldering iron. I like to use my big weller. And I know chat rooms are going to go nuts going, oh, my God, you're going to put a huge blob and you're going to short out everything. After a while, using the soldering gun, you, one can get pretty good. And I'm pretty darn good at just soldering what needs to be soldered. And I put a big blob of solder on there, as you can see. And then I'm going to cut off the uh, protruding lead. Now. Caution, anytime you're using wire diagonals like we see here, when you cut that lead off, it's going to go out like a shot and it's going to go right into your eyeball if you're down there looking carefully. 
So for heaven's sake, never, ever, ever cut off a little bit of uh, hard wire that's going to become a projectile and hopefully not into your face. So be cautious and line up what you're going to do. Put your hand over it and then go ahead and do click and it'll be set. So now that we finished, we got a big solder blob, and now we've got to work on the right-hand uh, terminals as well. As you can see, they've got a blob there, but the pin has simply wiggled loose. So anytime you see open spots like that, it's because it's missing the pin. As long as you're at it, <clears throat> give those uh, connectors to the power input. If they're connected with big bolts like this, make sure they're nice and tight so that it's not going to wiggle loose. And you're going to have great success with your Anderson connector box. And again, I've done a ton of repairs on Anderson connector boxes, but the only ones I've never worked on is West Mountain Radio. And uh, they seem to have uh, everything so well uh, anchored uh, that we have yet to uh, break one out. And it's not just one manufacturer. It's anything where they go into the circuit board and you're constantly pulling up on it, it's ultimately going to break off the board. But all you got to do is undo the screws, get to the back, and you should be able to uh, uh, easily resolder uh, the pins that have been pulled out from the circuit board.